As we continue our exploration of J.P. Sears' transformative journey, we delve into his critique of the societal and political landscape. J.P. sees a deliberate attempt by those in power to disconnect people from God, viewing God as a source of true freedom. For people who want to control you, which is what evil is, anytime someone tries to control you in a way that's not in your best interest, that's what I call evil. So for the force of evil, that is communism, wanting to control you, they realize people who have a faith in a real higher power, God, they're not controllable. So we have to become their higher power. We need them to depend on us, not depending on their faith in God, but that we need them to depend on us, need us, be obedient to us, or else uh, communism just doesn't work. And even when that happens, it still doesn't work, but nonetheless. JP's observations extend to the division in beliefs between political affiliations. He points out the varying degrees of faith in God between Republicans and Democrats, linking this to the broader cultural and spiritual battles he perceives in society. And we can see the tyrannical authoritarians attempt to disconnect people from their faith in God. It's certainly at play now. From a political perspective, it's actually interesting to see that just 64% of Democrats believe in God, while 92% of Republicans believe in God. And of course, right now, as it stands, the evil, the satanic ways, the communist ways tend to be much more abundant on the Democrat side. So it's not too surprising that just 62% of Democrats believe in God. In a recent Q&A session, JP reflected on the growing trend towards Christianity. He observed that more and more people over the past three years have found themselves naturally gravitating towards Christian beliefs. Uh, I had written off religion, just thought it was old dogmatic BS. Yet, the past few years, I've accidentally become more Christian. Hmm. Haven't even tried, but accidentally become more Christian, where I look at traditional values and perspectives. They make way more sense to me now than they ever had before. And I'll share this. You didn't ask, so here it yeah. comes. Uh, after my live stand-up comedy shows, I do VIP Q&As. And a lot of people there have shared with me, hey, JP, me too. Mm. I've become more Christian the past three years. I haven't been trying, but I have been. And one, I think that's really cool. And two, my hypothesis and why that is for people, including myself, we're accidentally becoming more Christian. Why is that? I don't think evil's ever been more apparent in our world mm -hmm. during my lifetime. And when, you know, evil comes from Satan. This shift, according to JP, is not a coincidence, but a response to the times we live in. A natural movement away from confusion towards clarity, from chaos to faith. JP also spoke about the natural polarization happening in society. He sees people moving away from woke ideologies and towards God, seeking solace and faith amidst the turmoil of the world. Just for the ease of not having to do your own thinking, but just like, tell me what to think. Okay, yeah, that's, that's okay, that's what I think. If you're not willing to do that, you naturally polarize in the opposite direction in the presence of evil. And oftentimes, you know, if you're awake, you do that. If you're woke, you go towards it. Oh, that thing over there, that's a good thing. But it's actually the devil masquerading as an angel in disguise. So as you just naturally polarize in the opposite direction from evil, what's in that direction? This polarization, as JP views it, is a reaction to the increasing visibility of what he perceives as evil forces pushing people to seek refuge in the divine. JP delves deeper into his critique of gender ideology during a discussion. He expresses concern over how these ideologies are used to disconnect people from their faith in God, implying that God makes mistakes. One of the first principal objectives of communism is disconnect people from God. Kind of, you know, it makes you wonder communism being the complete work of the devil. And, right. and I think disconnecting people from God nowadays, uh, one of the ways the devil's trying to do that 
isn't by talking about God, but it's talking about gender. Because to your point, if you can convince someone, hey, you were actually born in the wrong body, then you're thinking, well, God makes mistakes. And then you're thinking, well, if there was a God, he wouldn't make mistakes. Therefore, mm-hmm. to the degree I believe in the gender ideology is the, the degree that I'm basically convincing myself God doesn't exist. So I think with with the radical stuff happening with gender ideology, I do believe to the best of my thinking, that's what it is the principal objective of this gender ideology. It's getting people disconnected from God. He argues that by promoting the belief that God is fallible, these ideologies aim to convince people that God does not exist, a tactic he sees as a principal objective in the broader spiritual battle. JP expresses concern over the rise of gender ideology, viewing it as part of a larger agenda to erode traditional values and further disconnect people from their faith. His views also extend to global organizations like the World Economic Forum, which he sees as playing a role in this larger metaphysical conflict. And specifically, we see the coercion to disconnect people from God playing out in all kinds of propaganda, the gender ideology propaganda. We're, we're, they're attempting to get people to believe that God made mistakes, which is a, a fascinating way to basically get people to not believe in God. Because if you believe in God, you probably believe God doesn't make too many mistakes. Like, hey, uh, look at this junk between my legs. I'm the wrong gender. So <laughs> they try to teach us your mind, what you want. You are right. God's wrong. God made a mistake. Dude, you're totally right about your, you You should be a woman. God made a mistake. So, you know, there probably is no God. But when we see all this gender ideology stuff that hinges on that principle that there probably was a God, he wouldn't be screwing up your gender now, would he? We see that coming at our kids all the time. And amongst other devious intentions behind that kind of ideology, I believe one of the principal ones at its core is to disconnect people from their faith in God. He sees the events like those of January 6 as pivotal moments that reveal deeper spiritual struggle. For JP, these are not merely political events, but signs of a profound spiritual warfare between good and evil forces. And I think prayer works in a similar way, where you look at where Prayer is needed. God's will is needed. It's absent of God. Whether it's like, hey, the World Economic Forum or political prisoners from January 6th or uh, uh, children in public schools or individual situations you or I might be in. We need God. We need blessings. We need support. How are we going to get it? So, cool, we're in the submarine. I believe prayer becomes the tube that channels the oxygen of God down to us. So it's like God's there. God's there, but we got to bring God into the situation. So I think when we're in a prayerful state of mind, we're opening up a channel to bring God where God is needed. And get this, right now, I think we're at a time of spiritual warfare. We look at what's going on in the world, conflict between different nations, division all over the place. We want to teach this to your kids. It's like, ah, you seem kind of satanic. Well, that's because I think they are. So I, even though we see these literal things playing out at the physical level, I think they're, what we're seeing is symptoms of what's happening at more of a metaphysical level. I think right now, Satan and God are at war. In a time of spiritual warfare, what's on the line is you and I, our souls, our children. One side wants to control us, The other side wants to free us. JP's journey underscores a significant shift from a place of skepticism to one of faith. His transformation is a story of awakening to the realities of our world, the spiritual battles within it, and the power of faith to overcome fear and bring light to the darkest corners. Who is Jesus? Jesus, uh, well, I would say Jesus was the Son of God and an incarnation for uh, people to acknowledge for the purpose of getting closer to God. J.P. Sears' story is more than a personal narrative. It's a reflection of a broader awakening. 
a journey from darkness to light, from fear to faith. The challenges of recent times as JP experienced have not just exposed the shadows, but have also illuminated the path to a deeper understanding of good and evil and the necessity of choosing light over darkness. As we conclude this series, we're reminded of the power of transformation and the impact of awakening. What J.P. Sears' journey teaches us is that in times of turmoil, we have the opportunity to rediscover what truly matters, faith, freedom, and the pursuit of a higher truth. How have the events of recent times shaped your belief? How have they awakened you to the deeper realities of our world of faith in God?